Glad Rap channel, here with Joe Codina, now the uh, WBA international champion. Have I got it right? Yeah, international. So that was your first professional fight with Hakim Ben Ali. Yeah. Tell me your thoughts, man. What was it, it was like? My, my seventh professional fight. Okay. So my fierce for the title. Got it, so got it. My man. fierce title fight. Um, uh, yeah, and it's in my hometown, which for me, I can't ask for more. Um, got the got the stop between. So you repping the Bluebirds as well? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's my hometown. Got it, got it. So, uh, what was the atmosphere? Have you fought out here at the Principality Stadium before? Yeah, I, I boxed on the, the Joshua Takam card. Okay. I was uh, fight actually the one before Joshua, so um, I experienced all these these this, this big this, these big shows before I boxed in. Um, in Wembley when Joshua boxed against Klitschko, I opened the show there. Um, I boxed in front of 75,000 people last time um, here. What's it like, man? It, it's an unbelievable feeling. Um, and the reception I had last time out and even now was unreal. Um, for me, it just gives me a boost and a, an extra breath to push through. So it isn't actually like, it's, it's not a fear driver, is it? Nah, nah, listen. I, I've been to Olympic Games and for me, yeah. Olympic Games is you don't get bigger. Okay. And for pressure and for, for news, that was the most the pressure and nerves I've ever been so this I'm not I can't say it's a walk in the park because it's far from that but um, it's definitely different it's different so you put him down about three times, three times yeah, yeah the guy who kept on coming up so um, what was it like were you just trying to trying to pressure him and finish it off early I knew he didn't have the power to, to, to hurt me um, so I was just trying to sink my jab into his head sink it um, my jab into his body and uh, bring it up to the head and then work off it work off it body and um, every time I was hitting into the body he was wincing so for me it, was, it only made sense to just keep targeting target in that area. Yeah, what's it like living with Ricky Burns and training with him and just with these champions? I mean, yeah. how does that help your mentality? Um, training with, uh, I train with um, Ricky Burns, three-weight world champion, Martin Wood, um, who's Commonwealth British and, um, and European champion, uh, John Ryder, Ted Cheeseman, um, Felix Cash, Connor, Connor Ben. Um, all these fighters, they're great fighters and we're all hungry and to me training alongside them, it, it only brings me on and, and seeing how Ricky Burns trains and, and how he lives, how he how he does everything in the gym, it just gives me an extra boost because I, I get to see it and I get to join in and, 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 and live the, the sort of the professional life as he's living. Do you purposely surround yourself with these kind of people that have achieved such success in their careers? Like does it, 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 for me, it only makes sense. Yeah. It only makes sense. There's no point staying um, trying to do your own thing because yeah you you're, you're in the dark. With, when when you got people like Ricky Burns and Martin Ward and John and all these people that have, um, have done big things in boxing, then um, yeah, why not why not learn off them? Are they quite open with giving advice? Or? Okay. Ricky Burns is. Uh, I try and pick. I just I watch him all the time. I watch him. We go to the gym together. Um, any advice I need, I'm sure he will give it to me. And um, I just I, I take a lot from him. He's a big inspiration. And I'm sure he benefits with hanging with a young champ as yourself, right? Seeing that hunger. So no one's really slacking, right? No, of course. Don't get me wrong. Like he's he's getting he's getting on in his boxing career, and he's he's um he's still there about at the top level. So he's obviously still got that that hunger there. It's not me coming up and wanting to take um, and. and sort of show me that I'm hungry because he's still got it. He's he's there above. So for me, it's uh, it's just uh, just watching him constantly, um, taking little bits from him. And if I can't pick his brain, then that's why I do. I wonder what it's like just being around positive influences at all times. Right? I mean, it must be incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, can I get your prediction for the for the main event? Um, uh, what round do you think uh, Parker's going to stop AJ? Yeah. I'm from New Zealand. So. You're from New Zealand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to have to scrap this in. <laughs> nah, I'm only joking. Um, I think... I think Joshua um, will stop in between six and six and eight, why, six why, and nine. You don't think Parker has it in him? Like, yeah, I think he, he do. I think he do. But I, unless he goes out and catches Joshua early, I just don't think he's got the power to keep um, Joshua away or um, the boxing skill. I think he has got the boxing skill. Actually, um, I can't say that, but I just don't think he's big or strong enough to keep Joshua away for for the twelve rounds or even um, stop him. I don't is, think so. Is it a wrong tactic to stand your ground and impose yourself? Um, yeah. Nah, in the heavyweight division, if you, if you start standing there and, uh, and, um, and both working away and you're, you're both having um, a slugfest and a war, it's only a matter of time before one of them shots seep through the gloves and, and land. So, yeah, in that heavyweight division, I, I just think it's um, a bit stupid if you start standing and holding your feet.
Joe Kadena, thanks for your time. Thanks for your prediction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.